When we started to prepare for this 10-year journey around the world, we sat down to discuss our goals. Yeah, and, and besides seeing wonderful cultures of the world and uh, God's beautiful creation and man-made marvels, our goal was really to make some friends as we traveled. That's right. When we look back at our travels over the years, it's really the people that we've met that stand out to us. Yeah, it's the it's their stories and how they choose to live their life that's really fascinated us. Oh, it really has. And we've, we've learned that everyone has a backstory. And this week, we're going to share one of those stories with you. Yeah, and the friends we've made. C.S. Lewis said, you're never too old to set another goal or dream a new dream. We're John and Bev, and after a lifetime of hard work, our retirement goal is to travel the world and finish our lives with many memories we've made along the way. We are the Retirement Travelers. Come along as we travel the world on this crazy retirement adventure. As we were traveling through New Mexico, we stopped at a little mountain town called Cloudcroft at the top of the Lincoln National Forest. We stopped for lunch and uh, while we were there eating, we struck up a conversation with another couple sitting in the next booth. Their names were Connie and Eric. And during the course of the conversation, they actually invited us to their home in Northern California. And they had mentioned water skiing, but we had no idea that they actually had a water ski lake in their backyard. It all began when Eric was 12 years old and he watched the wide world of sports just like we all did. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I did too. He watched the Masters Water Ski Tournament where they slalom skied and he was determined to uh, learn it himself. So he recruited his brothers and uh, they gathered up some string some milk jugs and some steel out of their father's workshop and they headed to the Sacramento River where they dropped it into the water. Now Eric's first boat wasn't a high-tech marvel that you <laughs> see today. No, his brothers had two four by eight sheets of plywood laminated together with a 10 horsepower motor strapped to the back. It was Eric's very first slalom course and he was determined to perfect his skills. Over the next eight years, Eric thumbed a ride behind any boat that would pull him. He uh, says he probably rode behind a hundred different types of boats. Wow. I know, I can only imagine. He had such passion and uh, fast forward 20 years and he competed in every tournament he could get himself into up and down the West Coast. He competed in slalom, jump and barefoot. He perfected his skills and boy, did he work hard. Yes, he did. In 1998, Eric began constructing his very own water ski haven, Villa Lagos. He used the equipment that he had with his construction company to make these lakes that could be used for his own enjoyment, but also for water ski tournaments. I think what impressed me the most was Eric's lifelong passion with water skiing. See, he's 67 years old and has truly been doing this his entire life. It reminded me a lot of my passion with running and Bev's passion with golf. Okay, that's that a, that's, is impressive. That's impressive. <laughs> that is incredible. Wow. Oh, he's going shorter now. And watching Eric, let me tell you, this is one amazing guy. He's 67 years old and I'm pretty sure he's world class for his age. I'm <laughs> pretty sure he is, no doubt. A slalom course consists of a series of buoys placed in the water at an exact distance from one another. The skier begins at a starting gate and they have to ski all the way down the lake clearing every buoy. In a competition, the skier skis the length of the course and if he clears each buoy, the rope in the boat is shortened and he goes again. This process is repeated until the skier falls or misses his mark. Okay. And do you still compete? No, no. <laughs> Three or four years. <laughs> see these line links right here? Oh, yeah. I see. You now he made that pass, and so what you do is you shorten the line. It makes it harder. It's so a 32 foot, okay. 32 feet off. Okay. See, we got we got 32 feet of rope laying here in the bottom of the rope. So uh -huh. the shorter the rope, the more challenging the harder it's going to get. Yeah. And you go until you fall or you miss. <laughs> oh. Oh. So you can fall the first. Go, go, go. You'll miss the first time, baby. <laughs> I won't even be able to get up. <laughs> Right there. He's 
that he, he would be yeah. he would be out in competition. That, they were scoring. At, they called one and a half right there. Um, he, he did, you got to get around the buoy and back to the wing to score a full buoy. Okay. So he, he fell before he got back. To the and wing. you just keep the boat between those center buoys. Then is that? Oh yeah. That's your job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, did I reach for this much too soon, <laughs> and I missed it, and I was. That was one of the best one balls I've had in a long time. <laughs> All right, now you got to run it coming back. <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> All right, let's try it one more time. All right, Sean, let's run it. We were so impressed with Eric and Connie, along with their friend Sean, who demonstrated some of his skills for us. On another day, Eric invited us to see the harvesting of their catfish. Yeah, catfish are a great complement to a ski lake. Yes, and the day before, they had harvested nearly 1,800 pounds of catfish. <laughs> we had so much fun watching them load them into the truck. Living on the sand and the sea, California's been good for me, but I got other plans. Oh. And so I'm gonna up and go all the way to Colorado, see what's waiting there. Come on, woo! Cause there's a fire in my heart, I feel the heat of falling stars, I keep running down a rambling road. Couldn't tell you where it starts, gotta find a missing part, a piece of heaven I can fall on. We can feel it down inside, you know it's gonna come, baby, where you gotta go? I've been a mile high, been low, seen a hundred skies or so, haven't found a home. But God knows I won't rest, won't slow Waking with the sun I'm gone to see what's waiting there Keep the fire in my heart Feel the heat of falling stars I keep running down the ramp and roll Couldn't tell you where it starts Got to find a missing part A piece of heaven I can call my own Feel it down inside You know it's gonna come Baby, where you gotta go? Usually their crops of fish head straight to the fish market, but this crop of fish was actually heading to a lake near Sacramento where handicapped individuals, adults and children were going to be able to fish them. Yeah, it brought back a lot of memories for me. When I was in high school and college, I worked with my dad at Easter Seals camps for uh, disabled children. And one of the things we would frequently do is help them catch fish. <laughs> so I'm sure these catfish are gonna bring a lot of joy in Sacramento. So after fish harvesting was over, Sean invited me to play golf on their golf course. Now it's not every day that a girl gets an invitation from a shirtless man to play golf at <laughs> such a fine golf course. It was such a fine course. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. We had set out buoys so we would have something to hit at. There were no flagpoles, there was no green, there was barely a green piece of grass. You can move three, three weeds or branches. Three weeds or branches. Yeah. That so which, which means... So you can touch your ball. Yeah, or okay. say you land in a bunch of weeds, you yeah. can take three strikes at, at around the ball to clear the weeds with your club. Awesome. Or pick up three things. Yeah, I like you, that. Yeah. I'm in trouble. <laughs> okay, your turn. I'm in trouble. Went a little right. All right. Oh, that was pretty good. Think I should chip it? Eric, she's amazing golfer. She's kicking my hiney left and right. 
Yeah, not a lot of spectators. Eric and I followed around in a golf cart <laughs> and watched them. It was so much fun. But thank you, Sean, for a great day. When we started this video, one of the things we talked about was making lifelong friends as we traveled. And we really feel like we did that this week. Yes, thanks, guys. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Connie. And thank you, Sean, for your hospitality and really special memories of Villa Lagos. Uh, the water skiing, the uh, harvesting of the catfish, the dinner at night, dinner, the makeshift golf. Uh, we <laughs> had a, we had a great time, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll see you in Italy, and we'll see you next week as we head up the coast to Oregon. And be sure to subscribe and ring that bell to get notified of our next video.